Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Canadian Shield, your trusted source for analysis. My name's Sterling. I'm your host. Stephen Gilbo was on Power Play the other day talking to Vasa Capellas about how the carbon tax is not a big deal for Canadians. It's just that it's been marketed incorrectly. Like somehow the person who's not suffering anything from it, Stephen Gilbo, is going to convince you, the person who's doing without for months and years on end, that it's all just a giant misunderstanding. As we open, we'll hear Stephen Gilbo tell you his position on whether he can pause the tax like he did for other constituents that voted for the Liberal Party. Any chance on April 1st that your government does not increase the price on carbon? No, we have no intention of, of doing this. But they have deduced that there is not the collective buy-in necessary to put forward the consumer carbon tax. Why is that argument lost on you? Well, it's not lost on me. I mean, sometimes showing leadership is doing things that are difficult. But but, but unfortunately, those people, uh, including some that I, I really respect, have, have yet to show how we make up for the lost in terms of being able to reduce our climate change pollution. So right out of the gate, he doesn't have any respect for you, right? He said those people who um, disagree with the carbon tax, some of whom he really respects. And understand that what he said there was, He's making the tough decisions because he's the leader, right? He's the leader, and, it's, and sometimes it's tough. I just don't feel like he's any he's he's qualified to lead. I get that he got some election, and some people in a, in a small region of Canada voted for him, but this this insidious uh, carbon tax is really not the answer to Canada's environmental issues. What I what I take away mostly from that first segment was how he believes that he knows better than the rest of us, right? He said it himself. Being a leader means being, you know, and it's like, okay, buddy, but listen, we're the ones that are going through it, not you. We're the ones that are suffering from it, not you. You're the one who's living on a big, fat, six-figure pension. You write off a lot of your food. You write off a lot of your transportation. And Canadians are going through hard times. In fact, we're paying for your food and for your transportation. And to tell yourself that on the one hand, there is no way in the world you are going to pause the carbon tax and on the other hand you want us to believe that with that narrow-mindedness that you have that the far left is so famous for you're somehow open to other people's suggestions you're somehow open to listening to what other people are suggesting because every time i turn around every time i see somebody suggest something to you you call them names then you shut them down and then you ignore them and you don't answer their questions. You don't talk to them in any way, shape or form. All the while, Canadians are going through some seriously difficult times, historically difficult times. Now, Vassi, to her credit, and we're all aware of how bad the CTV is trying to manipulate the election results, asked him a direct question. So your contention is there is no other policy that could displace the consumer portion of the carbon tax. The ND I'm very disappointed with the NDP, and I think there are a lot of people out there who are disappointed with the NDP. And, and, but maybe and, there are, there's another way to look at it. Maybe they are responding to public sentiment that has increasingly become opposed to the imposition of this carbon tax, regardless of the arguments that your government is making. And again, I'll circle back to the individuals I name. People like Premier Eby and, and Bonnie Crombie are not out there saying there should be no climate plan, we shouldn't do anything to address climate change or trying to downplay the impact of climate change. They're simply acknowledging what I think public opinion polling has borne out quite clearly, that there is not the support out there for this policy. So there's less support than, that, than there was. I love how he just says that. Oh, so there's less support than there was. So he finally admits the fact that Canadians do not support it. Now, the reason that there's less support than there was, which he doesn't want to compute and he doesn't want to admit, is because originally people were like, okay, you have this idea, let's try it. We are willing to try it. We are trusting you and your contention to give it a try. Now, it's many years later. Everything is broken. Everything is a disaster. Everything is out of reach for, for normal, everyday Canadians. The middle class is the smallest it's ever been since before the 1900s, before the Industrial Revolution. The state of Canada is you know, homelessness for people who are educated, homelessness, for people who are working decent jobs. 
your carbon tax has, has caused a lot of issues and a lot of problems and people can make a direct connection between their carbon tax and and the destruction that we are the economic destruction that we are suffering so you say well the 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 uh impact or the um carbon tax is not as received well as it was that's because what you have to appreciate what you have to give people respect for is that they're capable of thinking for themselves they don't need you to think for them they saw what happened they can see what happened and they have changed their position now that's something again that you don't seem to be able or capable or willing to do but that is the reality on the ground people are struggling and they know that no matter what you say, there's no way in the world $800 a year or whatever happens to be in that region is recouping the amount of money that is flying out of their homes, out of their bank accounts, out of their pockets. Vasi, to her credit, asked a very good question, a very tough question. She got some facts and let's just hear it out. The question of affordability, because I think what you have done, and I've listened to it consistently again, is really push back against the idea that Canadians feel that this is something that impacts their own cost of mm -hmm. living, right? And, and you point to the rebate and the analysis that has been done Bank that show eight hundred. Sure, there, there is an additional analysis though that has been done by the parliamentary budget officer that looks at the cumulative economic impact. So not just fiscal impact of indirect and direct, but with the rebate, but the cumulative economic impact. And it says that for Canadians, their overall costs, which now include the fuel charge and GST paid and lower employment and investment income, exceed the rebate and the induced reduction in personal income taxes arising from the loss in income. There is an argument to be made that Canadians do feel the imposition of this has affected their affordability and their, the overall economy. Now, what she said there uh, basically boils down to the fact that the if, the, if you assume that the carbon tax is making is breaking you even like they claim like 80 percent of people all of that stuff that the liberals claim the cumulative effect of shrinking um investment and in smaller and less jobs and even to the point where you're going to be now paying less income tax because you because you've made less money you're going to be knocked down a tax bracket is far outstrips anything that the carbon tax gives us and i think that that's important uh, i heard uh, mp wilkinson say that we shouldn't be worried about the carbon tax because it puts more money in the pocket of people that that are poor which the guy is completely you know completely out of touch i don't know how these guys get elected but the idea that a poor individual can can wait 90 days is where it goes wrong for him right let's just say let's just say on, on let's just say for the sake of argument and it is not true the carbon tax in no way shape or form is good for the economy in no way shape or form is putting money in your pocket there's just no way you know, basic mathematics tells us the complete opposite because it's destroying industry, right? It, and any job that you know is going to be passing on those expenses right to you. So there's a lot of carbon tax that is put on that is not put back in the rebate, right? There's a lot of industry that, that has to pay carbon tax that doesn't get a penny back. And some of you um, subscribe to me so you know exactly what I mean. These guys don't have a clue what's going on because they're out of touch. They're out of touch with what it means to be a commoner. They're out of touch with what it means to be a blue collar. They just don't care. They're, they're, they're just ideologically driven and they don't care about anything other than what they care about. Now, you won't believe this next statement where he claims that he, we have to do it for Canada so that they'll do it in, in China. I'm not joking. It's easy to say, oh, you know, Canada only accounts for a small portion of the overall emissions. But how, if we're not doing it here, how can I go in and talk to, to, to China or India or other large polluters in the world and say, listen, folks, we have to work together and find a solution to this? Because otherwise, all of our population, regardless of, of where you are and who you are, will suffer from it. Why they say, hey, we're just a small portion of it is because I think that's also true, right? And that's right. It's easy to say it because it's true. That's the thing about it, Mr. Gilbo, that you want to ignore. It's the facts, and the facts are that Canada is a, a I mean, it's like you're in a sinking boat, or you're in a, you're trying to, we're, we got a little Tim Hortons coffee cup, and we're trying to bail out water, and two people behind us are using fire hoses to fill the boat, right? One being China, one being India. So maybe you should abandon your position as an MP of Canada and just go to those countries and become an activist. You know, take your green peace and your activism and go to those countries and get things started, get things fired up. Because I promise you that if either one of those countries just puts in a 10% reduction, it's going to do more than Canada can do if we were all paying carbon tax out through our 
you know, for the end till the end of humanity. This time, MP Gilbo just speaks the quiet part out loud, and he completely and utterly lays bare his the flaw and the dishonesty in his position. But the carbon tax itself, at 10 percent of your overall emissions reductions by 2030, is not going to stop a fire from hitting Jasper. No, and and it's going to take years and years. Let me make a parallel. There are no magic solutions. There's no magic wands that you but can But you kind wave. of have presented the carbon tax as a magic no, solution. No, no, not at all. I never, I mean, there's, but the reality is that even with all those measures, we're still, ha we still have more work to do to meet our, our, our 2030 targets. So, first of all, he admits that it's not going to stop any forest fires. At least that's some progress. He must be getting some, you know, some really bad polling numbers behind the scenes that he starts to admit these kinds of things out loud. And then he says, no, 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 it's not a magic wand. And yet every time I hear about him, if we don't do this, the whole, you know, the ecosystem is going to collapse instantly while India and China burn things without any hesitation, like, you know, put carbon up into the air without any hesitation. And then he says, no, 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 but don't worry. We still have a lot more to do this. What we're doing isn't even enough. So if what we're doing isn't even enough, what's the pressure? If what we're doing isn't even enough, then why are we doing it? I mean, it's like I just described. It's like bailing a, a, a sinking boat with a cup while somebody's putting fire hoses worth of volume of water into the back. I mean, it's just not working. So why are you putting us through all of these hardships for your own vanity? That's the only answer that makes any sense. Because in his mind, he wants people to build statues to him like they did to Lenin and Stalin and, you know, Hussein and all those kinds of people that get statues built to them. It's the only thing that makes any sense. It's just that he's so wrapped up in his own ideology, wrapped up in his own belief that this is the only way to do it, that he won't listen to anything else and he won't, you know, pump the brakes. He won't say to himself, okay, wait a second, it's not working. Why are we putting everybody through this? If we have to move our targets from 2030 to 2040, it's no big deal, right? It's not going to cause the end of the, of the planet in that little short little bit of time. We've done, you know, X, Y, Z so far. So if, but he can't do any of that. There's no logic in his, in his approach because his approach is designed completely and utterly for you to do what he says, no matter what. It's not about making progress. It's about doing what you're told. And that is why it falls to pieces on him, right? Because people think for themselves. All right, in the last question, she says to him, well, what's the plan for the future? And his answer is just completely ridiculous. Beyond 2030, how much more of an increase are consumers in for when it comes to the fuel charge? We're, so we haven't done that analysis. We haven't even um, we haven't even, haven't figured out what will be our, our next target for for 2035. We have to we have to do that. We're all is it fair to assume though that the price on carbon, if we need to be more aggressive in meeting our emissions targets, will continue to increase beyond 2030? It's not going to stay at 170 dollars, will it? Well, I mean, the, 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 the idea is not to increase the price on pollution for the sake of increasing the price on pollution. The idea is to, to use this measure to ensure that it drives down pollution. So the idea isn't to target pollution for the sake of targeting pollution. The idea is that it drives down pollution. You haven't given us any substitutions, though, right? It's like people still need cars. and st People are still need food. I mean, you're taxing, you're putting carbon tax on food. And you heard Vassi mention 170 dollars per metric ton that's what she meant for polluters that are in the industrial side so that's money that's going directly into the pockets of the government that 170 tons now if you own a business you have to add that cost to, to your product so that 170 dollars a ton is going directly onto the price tag in the grocery stores which is exactly what the um, parliamentary budgetary officer meant when he said that the ripples are now because those companies are paying more they have to hire less people i mean the ripples are staggering that's why our economy has shrunk for seven straight quarters. But the one that pit, the one that upsets me is this guy says, well, we haven't even looked at the numbers yet, what we're going to be doing past 2030. So every day I hear these liberals stand up and talk to me about what the future I got to do, the sacrifices me and my children have to make for the future, for the future, for the future, for the future. And you haven't even made a plan past 2030. You're not looking at the future. So why am I looking at the future? I think that you need to stop, pull your heads down out of the clouds. Maybe too many of those uh, emissions have got you thinking all funny and start to realize that in the here, in the now, and in the presence, people are suffering. So you need to go back to the drawing board. You need to find a solution to the problems before you implement hardships on people. Because you did say something that I do agree with you with, though I don't think you're qualified. 
Leadership is a difficult thing. And to, when you need to lead people, you, meet, you need to lead them. If you want to be the guy that's running the show, you have to make sure that you can do so in a way that keeps everybody doing well. Not making sacrifices for your personal ideology so that you can tell yourself that you're some sort of hero of the people while, the, while you walk around like a, a, an ant from an ant colony on the backs of everyone else. All right. I'm going to wrap here. I want to thank you for listening. I'll talk to you next time.